Hello, hello, 390 Wagon Master here. This is part two of my Robin SB510D. Uh, actually, we'll just call this the update. And uh, I did a factory alignment on this radio and it uh, lined up just beautiful. Um, it's very stable. I did no capacitor uh, swap out or anything like that. I didn't replace any caps in it. It does not need it. I'm, by the way, I'm just not from that camp to be quite honest with you. They're a very solid chassis. The components they used in them, in my opinion, especially by today's standards, are, are top notch. So anyway, um, I didn't need to, to mess or futz with any of that stuff. This radio puts out a nice solid three and a half watt dead carrier RMSing to about four which is great. This radio on single sideband will RMS about 8 to 10 watts, and I'll get about 12 plus watts PEP on uh, single sideband, and I'm totally happy with that. Audio on here is great. It's nice and clean, 100% modulation on both AM and single sidebands. It's just got a great uh, waveform to it. So anyway, in the other video, I went over front panel features, so check that out if you want to. Um, I wanted to talk real quick about um, the modifications that were done to this radio. In the first video, um, as you guys saw, we found out that this uh, local distance switch here, when you pull it, was actually extra channels. And the clarifier is unlocked. Now, generally when I get a radio that's this clean, because cosmetically this radio is in extremely good condition. It's not mint or anything like that, but it's in very good condition. When I get a radio like this, I'll try to put it all back to stock. Um, except I have to have an unlocked clarifier. It's just a personal choice. I know there's a big argument about that, but anybody that's been in this hobby for a long period of time knows that if your radio's aligned properly, um, you don't have a squirrely clarifier with super diodes and all that, um, this is a great modification to have. So anyway, the uh, person that did the uh, PLL mod on this kind of butchered the, uh, the foil traces coming from the PLL 858 chip. So... I like the way he did that. I checked out uh, and uh, on the bench here, and I figured out the um, the channels here, and I like the way he did it. Channels one through seven are in the 26 meg range, and channels eight through 40 uh, are in the 27 meg range, and it basically goes, uh, channel one is uh, 26565. It goes all the way up to channel seven, which is 26635. Then at channel eight, it starts the climb from 27455 and then goes all the way up to 27805. No weird skips or jumps or anything like that. Because there's different ways you can modify this chip and you get different uh, combinations of frequencies. So I like the way the guy did this and I did not want to undo all the repair work to his botched um, attempt at modding this uh, chip. I'm, I'm also kind of wondering when I see all, it was on the back row of the chip, when I saw all the foil traces cut, I'm wondering, did they try to put in like a Digiscan UFO or something like that? So I don't know. Anyway, the solder joints are good. I looked at it with the uh, magnifying glass and uh, they look good. So I just wanted to leave it all alone. I also left the clarifier modification alone. He did it the way I would have done it. And that gives us a one KC up and about almost a full three KCs down. It's not touchy. It's very forgiving. I really like it. Uh, so I left that alone. Now, um, let's see here. Oh, I was going to say, the reason why Steve did not like this radio, if I remember this correctly, he wasn't uh, too uh, happy with the receiver. Now, the receiver in these can throw people off. Um, this has a very quiet front end on it. In fact, it's so quiet that if you're not used to this chassis, you'll actually think there's something wrong with it but there is not. This thing has almost a zero noise noise floor on it. Um, it's, it's a pretty quiet chassis, and once you get these things aligned, um, they perform better than any new radio could ever dream of uh, doing as far as uh, receiver goes. Transmit audio on this thing is just awesome as well. So anyway, uh, I'm very happy with the results from the 510. And uh, I got to be honest with you, I'm, I'm, I've never really been a Robin guy. I just don't know very many people that have that have had them. And uh, the CB scene here in Salt Lake was mostly, you know, Cobra, 
uh, realistic Tram Browning, you know, the usual big names and stuff. And I just don't know uh, or remember talking to very many people that ran Robin gear. But anyway, uh, Robin's designers, um, they, you know, they wanted this board populated uh, to give the the specifications that, that they had as far as uh, re receiver sensitivity and selectivity. And I really like what Robin did with that. They did a much better job with this chassis than, um, say, Realistic did with the TRC449. And I think it was the 457 base as well. Um, and I think it's just a great radio. So anyway, long story short, if you find one of these... Uh, give it a shot, uh, see what you think, because, you know, I'll tell you what, they just don't perform like these old rigs anymore. I know all the modern radios have the fancy bells and whistles and stuff like that, but when it comes right down to the nitty-gritty and trying to uh, pick a signal out of the weeds out there in uh, skip land, this is the radio to do it. It doesn't have a lot of, you know, RF output power, but hey, that's why people make linear amplifiers. So you could always put a nice amp on this and uh, be just fine. Also, these radios are great if you have a preamp on your amplifier. I know a lot of people don't like uh, preamps on their linear amplifiers. Well, maybe you're using them on the wrong radio because you use it on a radio like this or an old school Madison or Cobra 2000 or a three button Grant or something. Wow, you can really suck a, a signal out of the woodwork. So anyway, uh, please leave questions or comments down below. If you own one of these, tell me what you think about it, for sure. And if you've not yet subscribed to this channel, uh, please consider doing so. Thank you very much. P.S. This radio stays in the collection. So uh, I really like this as an everyday rig. All right, cheers.